minutes in the future, though perhaps not as few as implied by circumstance, a peregrine mendicant trundles precious cargo beneath the gleam of the celestially ominous. Maybe you should go outside and get some sun. You say a bittersweet goodbye to your beloved city. It is time to move on to greener pastures. By which, of course, you mean an arid, sandy wasteland upon which nothing green has grown in years. The door shuts behind you. A panel on the door becomes illuminated. As you ponder over the marks on the panel, you hear another mechanical sound overhead. The LCD panel appears to have a touchscreen interface. Curiously prod the funny looking spirograph. It appears the funny looking spirograph room is locked. The floor rotates a full 360 degrees beneath you, while the surrounding wall seems to stay put. Try selecting the triangly fractal. The triangly fractal room does not appear to be locked. The floor turns 120 degrees and the door opens. You go through the door to find another room. It's the same size as the other one you just wasted all of that time in, while a clock was ticking down to something which may or may not have been your doom. Maybe there is something in here that will help you escape. Against the wall there is another perplexing contraption. Against the opposite wall is some sort of control panel which catches your eye. It has two large screens, but only one appears to be active. There are fields for numbers which appear to be modifiable with the dials to the right. Some numbers are already supplied by default, perhaps entered by the previous user. There are a few buttons below, the largest one bearing the symbol marking this room. Also, it looks like there is a meter stick propped up there for some reason. Attach your trusty knife to the meter stick. You immediately craft a measuring spear through possibly the most advanced form of alchemy employed thus far. This is obviously the most important thing to do first. Obviously. Or it would obviously be the most important thing to do had you remembered to bring your trusty knife. You feel so insecure without your trusty knife. It makes you want to slit your wrists, or at the very least, flog your carapace with some sort of measuring apparatus. Look at the other wall. You examine the perplexing contraption across the room. You of course have no idea what it could possibly do. You adopt the only obvious course of action which is to poke and prod at it with your handy ruler. You are quite sure this is what science is all about. It is suggested that you press the triangle pattern. You go back to the control panel which is probably obviously controls that gizmo and you push the big blue button which is obviously probably the most obvious thing to push. You appearify a pumpkin. Upon examination of the pumpkin, it seems that this mysterious gourd was transported, appearified, from a specific time and location somewhere on this planet that you were on. You wonder if the machine, a purifier, will take any object that exists at whatever time and location you supply. There is a symbol carved on the pumpkin. You don't know what it means, and you doubt it will ever prove to be relevant in any way. You consider dining on the ripe flesh of the plump vegetable, but your curiosity about the purifier gets the better of you. You try to sneak a nibble from the pumpkin nonetheless. You move on to examine the attractive green buttons. The icon for the one on the left is that house shape you've seen plenty of times before. The right one on closer inspection appears to be a map for this underground facility, with an X marking its centre. You push the button, all of the numbers change. Perhaps these are the coordinates for the location of the centre of this facility, along with the local date and time? If this is the case, it would make a useful reference point for your current bearings. One way to find out would be to attempt to purify something from this facility. 
it should be easy to zero in on a location relative to the center because you have an uncanny knack for tracking precise distances you have already traversed in whatever units you choose. Your handy ruler gives you a good clue as to the basic unit of human measurement. You will go with that. You nudge the coordinates very slightly and bump up the elevation by 0.5 human measurement units. You make sure to keep the time approximately what it was to begin with. You purify your trusty knife. You nudge the numbers a bit more and purify a bunch of cans. This is so much more efficient than walking back into the other room to get them. You are to believe that time is at a premium, after all. It is suggested that you de-purify the pumpkin. Did this machine look like a de-purifier to you? Honestly, the idea that an purifier could both purify and de-purify things is so laughably ridiculous. You wish someone would de-purify your brain and re-purify it with a brain that is more smart and less dumb. It is suggested that you use your trusty knife to carve a spook scammer into the pumpkin. What the hell are you talking about? That idea makes no sense at all and is basically meaningless. Try using that mushy stuff in your gourd next time. Instead, you just carve off the top, exposing a decadent cache of gorgeous seed-laden ambrosia. <coughs> uh, needless to say, you consume all of it rather quickly, but it turns out to be too gross for us to watch. Maybe you should try moving the spirograph switch. You cannot move it. It has a spirograph-shaped indentation, and possibly will require a special kind of key to turn it. Then it purified the firefly out of the amber. You release your blinky new friend. You will give her a name when something suitably whimsical occurs to you. Adjust the time dial to purify the rotten pumpkin. You and Serenity consider new ways to waste more time with the purifier. You are assuming she is a girl firefly, even though you are not really sure that fireflies can even be girls. You target the extremely tasty rotten pumpkin that was sitting in the other room hours ago. It seems the purifier cannot purify something if it will create a time paradox. A gelatinous ghost pumpkin purifies and quickly dissolves into a pile of unappetizing sludge. Serenity blinks a message of urgency. You nearly forgot that while trapped in the amber, she was witness to all of your tomfoolery and dilly-dallying in the other room, and knows that the timer is about to expire. It is time to get this show on the road and escape. You reset the coordinates with the right green button again, and this time only adjust the elevation by approximately 10 human measurements. You attempt the rare and highly dangerous five times cliffhanger combo and fail. We are doing it, man. We are making this happen.
Sir John, you are no doubt reading this as a handsome and strapping young man. Why, the man grit needed to lift the book itself is a sign of your maturity. Not even to speak of the wisdom needed to grasp the nuance of Sassica's time-tested mischief. I am so proud of you, grandson. How I wish I could have delivered this heirloom to you in the flesh, but I am afraid it wasn't in the cards. For you see, John, like you, this book must yet take a journey. Its journey will end on the final day of my life, and even then will continue some. Though I suppose that will be up to your father. Perhaps he will discuss it with you one day, when he and you are ready. But it is your journey I am writing about to wish you luck. There will come a day when you will be thrust into another world, and once you arrive, that is only the beginning. You will soon delve even deeper into a realm of warring royalty in a timeless expanse, a realm of agents and exiles and consorts and colonel sprites, of toiling underlings and slumbering denizens, a realm where four will gather, the air of breath, the seer of light, the knight of time, and witch of space, and together they will ascend. John, if only you knew how important you were! I regret my passing came so early in your life, and yet I feel in my heart we have already met. But what I know for sure is that we will meet again! Until then, John, I do hope your father keeps you well fed. With love, Nana. P.S. <laughs>